So uh, we're just going to take you through this case. So the team's changed slightly. The ancillary staff are exactly the same, and you can see a big crowd. Uh, I've got Chris Baker with me. This is uh, Chris's patient. He's one of interventional cardiologists, and I've got Mike Bellamy on echo again. Uh, we're in a position to show you something interesting. So, uh, Chris, uh, we'll see the slide set, but uh, in a line, uh, what's the meat of this case? 76, frail, really severe right heart failure has been the problem with pleural effusion, lots of peripheral edema, and she's really deteriorated in recent times, ended up effectively in a wheelchair because of this. Originally referred actually to our centre for tricuspid repair, but it turned out once we'd investigated that she had an ASD, as you've seen. She's got aortic stenosis. We don't think that's part of the hemodynamic issue at the moment. A bit more than a sentence, but this is about, I think this is about her atrial septal defect. I think you summarised that very nicely. EDP. So live on screen, uh, you see that uh, we have the LV EDP, which is about uh, 30. I think in the interest of time, we may focus on the, on, the, on the PA pressure and what happens with balloon occlusion. So if you look at the angio picture, the balloon is actually up at the moment. I can tell you is that not a great deal has, uh, has changed in this lady. Uh, the EDPs remained about the same and the mean PA pressures remained about the same. And perhaps if you don't believe me, what we'll do is we'll deflate the ASD balloon now. And you can see live if any changes occur. Is We're going to deflate the ASD balloon. Um, if you looked at the end diastolic pressure, it certainly dropped one, once the balloon was deflated. So I think if you're going to close this hole, you should use a fenestrated device. Because we're about to put the sheath up, and I'm going to put a fenestrated device in. Um, I am worried about the, uh, the LVEDP. Uh, I think she's got mainly right heart failure. We know there's a 2.8 to 1 shunt going left to right. I think we just don't know the right answer, and I think the safest approach is to have a fenestrated device. Uh, so I'm uh, putting the sheath up now. Okay, so we've taken a 12 French sheath. Okay, so that we can get uh, the, the deep, Mike has made the defect at 16 maximum uh, when the balloon was up as well. So I don't think we need any bigger than that. So we're going to take the next size up, which is, an, uh, which is the 18 device with a fenestration of six. So the sheath is now going up if you're, if you're watching what's happening. And I'll park it up uh, in the, oh, the, the wire's just moved, but I've got the sheath across in any case. I want to try and avoid going into the appendage. I thought we'd show you the device. Uh, it's got a fenestration, which is perhaps the interesting part. So if we focus down on that, see the hole. Okay, so very clearly see the hole. Great. Yeah. So it's a six millimeter hole. So if I ask Chris to hold one end, I'll just pull it into you got it. the sheath. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to push the delivery sheath into our 12 French sheath. Actually, often easier just to have a little bit of device poking out to act as a little support. So I've got that. Just go up with the first sheath. Okay, so the first disc is about okay. to come on out. I've got a, a good roadmap of where the uh, ASD is on ballooning. And so I've got the first disc deployed. And so we're going to pull towards the septum. We maybe go to 2D echo and just on the 60 degree aortic view. Uh, then we'll see that it's caught the aorta, hopefully. There's a small aortic rim. Okay, so the, uh, we're pulling against the septum. And I'm just going to deploy a little bit more of the device to get a bit more waste and get this disc a little bit better. I'm happier there. And if people in the room are happy, I think we're just going to release the second disc. It looks good position. Okay, so... Looks good. So what do we think about that? It looks like a nice bite. And w maybe we'll focus on the echo and ask Mike to comment on that position. So there's very little rim anteriorly around the aorta, but uh, it looks good position. There's no leak on either side. <laughs> so should there be a leak coming through the hole, Mike? Let's see if we can see that on 3D, on 2, put color on. You can just see it there. You see the little width of where it's fenestrated. You can see the jet just in the center. Yep. And maybe before we release, I'll show you the hemodynamics again. Uh, the, uh, At least acutely, the uh, EDP hasn't jumped up as much as with the, with the balloon occlusion. It's sort of, uh, it's been a bit variable. Uh, and the PA pressure, uh, it's still about 60 systolic. So um, I think there've been minor changes, uh, maybe up a little bit compared to when we had no balloon occlusion, which was about 50 systolic, but uh, I, 
What do you think, Chris? I think we want to leave this device in. I do. It's quite interesting how much systo LV systolic pressure has gone up. It was about 100 when we started. Yeah, it's gone about 40, 40 millimetres up uh, in the systolic so pressure. Okay. So we're just going to release the device, and uh, if maybe I'll, ask, I'll get the catheter close, and if I ask Chris to uh, just uh, take the orange to the red, and we should see that it's, uh, this is one of those yeah. ball devices, and we'll pull it in. Uh, obviously, the device realigns a little bit, as it always does, um, and it still looks good. And I've got to say, that looks a fantastic echo result. Uh, Mike's done a great job with that picture. Okay, so uh, we're going to do an LV2O to pull back at the end of this case to really see what the hemodynamic gradient was. And as we do that, we see that uh, there looks to be, a, I think, at least a moderate level of stenosis. Yeah. We have had the benefit of uh, measuring uh, very carefully her uh, area on TOE. She's got good systolic LV function, so the area should genuinely show us something. So and uh, that area, Mike, was uh, measuring it what? On 2D, it was between 1.2 and 1.4 centimeters squared. So I think in the moderate range. So I think we're going to leave the valve alone uh, on this occasion. And um, yeah, I mean, we've got a pullback there of 50, 50. peak to peak. Yeah. So that's a little bit more than expected, but I think the uh, we also have the 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 human dynamics in her, I think, are slightly funny, aren't they? So well, I think they've, be, they've clearly been changing. Yes. <laughs> so, Chris, uh, uh, you, we balloon-sized, uh, we put a fenestrated device in, and uh, are you comfortable with the result that we got at the end? I am, yeah, and I'm impressed at the uh, effect we've had on the left ventricular hemodynamics, um, and that we haven't raised her LVEDP. I think we'll have to see now how well she's going to tolerate this, but I'm, I'm hopeful. Yeah, and I think we've actually waited for a good 15, 20 minutes, waiting to see if anything would happen. And maybe it's the fenestration that's helping, although no one's quite sure about that in the big world of ASD yeah. closure. Um, Mike, a final safety check to make sure we haven't put any holes where we shouldn't have? Yeah, no, it all looks good, actually. I'm happy. Yeah. The fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. So great. And thank, uh, Chris, thanks very much. Great thank success. You. Okay, well done. Well done.